Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are delighted to have you all with us as we dive into do-it-yourself fundraising and getting a good idea of KS Day coming up here on September 17th. Just want to welcome you all. Uh, we really appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with us. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started um, with our presentation. Uh, we want to kick everything off uh, real quick with just a little icebreaker. So if you will chat in where you're from, your name and where you're from, and maybe one of your favorite fundraisers that you've ever attended, whether it was a gala or a bicycle ride or an auction. So if everybody can just do a quick chat in, um, that would be great. And um, I think probably one of mine would be a gala. I've been to several galas that are a lot of fun. Fun, they're a lot of fun to attend. Um, and I am in Charleston, South Carolina. So I will type in my information now. All right, great. Got Indiana on the line. I know we've got uh, South Carolina on the line. And uh, so great. Thank you all for, for joining us. And we've got Louisiana. Wonderful. A chef soiree. I love those. Those are a lot of fun. Thank you, Ann and Mary and Chris and Jeff for, for chiming in. So we're going to go ahead and um, just going to go over the agenda real quick. We're going to do some brief introductions with everybody. We're going to talk about... Um, KS Awareness Day on September 17th. And then we're going to do go into a deeper dive um, on the DIY fundraising. Um, that's do-it-yourself fundraising. So we're going to talk a little bit more deeper about that and do some brainstorming, share with you our new software platform, Network for Good. And then we do want to leave some time for some questions and discussion. Uh, we do have some guest speakers with us today, um, so we're excited and we hope that this time together is going to be um, educated, educational and engaging and fun to keep the fun in fundraising. So thank you all again for joining us today. So just a couple quick little housekeeping um, things. We want to make sure that everybody's muted and their cameras are off. We are um, recording this presentation. So after the call, the presentation will be available for you to go back and watch it another time if you choose. So uh, thank you all again for joining us. And um, I'll just quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Meredith Repic. I am the Director of Development here at iDefine. I have over 24 years of fundraising experience experience from the March of Dimes. Um, and I have a passion for raising money for great causes. Um, I'm a people person. I'm very devoted uh, to building relationships. Um, I've spent most of my career working on fundraising strategies and plans around fundraising and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so I'm here to support you and to help you um, and to help us reach our goals here at iDefine so that we can continue to do the great work um, to find uh, a cure and an answer for Kleistra syndrome. So just want to, um, I live in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I'm married and have two kids, a 16 year old and 18 year old I actually dropped my daughter off at college yesterday. So it's been a, a busy weekend for me, um, but uh, really appreciate uh, the time. And I'm really excited to be here and help you all. So we want to talk a little bit about September the 17th. Um, this is Cleistra Syndrome Awareness Day, and um, it is a Sunday this year. So we're excited about that. And this is really a day for us to bring awareness to our mission and our vision and our cause. And it's really around marketing. So September 17th, um, again, is on a Sunday this year. So Want to encourage you to wear purple, to post on social media, ask your place of worship to maybe pass the basket for um, I Define that day. Share your story and help us to kind of to get the word out. Um, this is really an opportunity for us to market ourselves here at I Define. So uh, wanted to just kind of have you all chat in just some of the things that maybe you've done in the past for KS Day. If anybody can pop in the chat something you've done in the past. I know Facebook has done a lot 
proclamations. Okay, social media post. Great. Yes. So, um, so yeah. So, oh, this is your first one. Okay, great. So uh, there's going to be a lot of things on social media. Jeff does a fantastic job of really getting the message out. And then all of us coming together to really spread the word about um, bringing the awareness to Cleefster Syndrome. And this year, we also have had over 30 states sign up to do uh, the proclamation challenge. So over 30 states um, have um, proclaimed that uh, September 17th is um, KS Awareness Day. We still have about 20 states that have not done this, but this is remarkable work and a big thanks to all of you for stepping up and doing this for us and getting these letters out because in the past we've had maybe two to five uh, states step up and this year we have over 30, we have 30 states waiting for 20 more to come in. So if you have those letters out, uh, we do know that they can kind of be delayed. So uh, we're still keeping our fingers crossed that they all come through. So um just want to say a big thank you for, for everybody stepping up there. So now we're going to kind of get into, um, you know, your ideas, your fundraisers, your impact, and really making a, a, a big focus here on do-it-yourself fundraising. So like us, um, you know, we all can be champions um, for families with Cleveland strength with Cleefstra syndrome. Um, and with do-it-yourself fundraising, we can get really creative and organize events that really pertain to the communities that you live, work, and serve. Um, it's fun and it's really easy to make a huge impact in communities across the country um, and across the world uh, by doing these types of fundraisers. So DIY fundraising really puts fundraising into your hands. Um, it's really, we're able to pull events together that resonate with your community and bring meaning to things that inspire you. Um, and you're ultimately your friends and family that will bring in critical dollars um, to our mission. So um, these can be walks, they can be runs, golf tournaments, food tastings, um, all sorts of different things. So just wanted to see if you have, um, you know, a, a fundraise, drop in the chat, if you will, uh, a, a fundraising event that you think would work in your community. And I know we have several on the line that are going to be do, talking in a few minutes about their specific fundraisers and have done a phenomenal job of identifying activities in their communities that will make an impact. So if we have any other ideas, you'll see here a picture of a golf tournament, a food taste a run walk type of event. Um, so these are all great um, do-it-yourself fundraisers. So um, yep, walk and run, those do really well. Karaoke for Cleefstra, yes. And touchdowns, tailgates and touchdowns. Those are lemonade stands. Those are great, yes. All right, so let's kind of keep that momentum going and let's kind of talk a little bit more about um, about these types of events. So when we work together on these types of fundraising events, to we really bring everybody together to inform people about our mission and inspire our family and friends to come together uh, and raise funds. And with the money that we raise, uh, we can continue to do great work here at iDefine. And so I just want to highlight a couple of those things. So Number one, we're supporting research um, to find solutions so every family gets the best possible start. Uh, we're advocating for policies that prioritize the well-being of Clistra syndrome fam patients. And we're providing resources and programs for families through our podcast. I know you've seen Jeff and his podcast, listen to those. Um, I was listening to one today on YouTube, um, our national webinars and the national conferences. Uh, we're educating families on breakthroughs to improve patient outcomes. And we're uniting families together and local communities across the nation through these events and collaborations. So partnering with um, organizations and companies committed to our mission and vision is really, really important in bringing those families and friends together. So just wanted to spend a, a few minutes talking to you about how important these events are and that together we really do make a difference in the lives of families. So we're going to go ahead and get going here. Um, and uh, one, two, three, let's go, right? So I'm going to go through five different steps um, in the DIY platform. So one is we're going to start by completing the DIY form. And I'm going to walk you through that form here in just a few minutes. Um, the next thing we want to do, and we're going to go deeper into all of these, is 
individually give a gift to the fundraiser, share that we're doing the fundraiser with everyone that we know, ask for donations and support by email, text, and on social media, and then, of course, celebrate. But the first thing we need to do is we need to decide on the type of fundraiser we want to host. So if you can imagine it, you can do it. Um, almost any activity can be turned into a fundraiser. You can plan informal events like yard sales, bake sales, uh, fitness challenges, push-ups, sit-ups, or host large-scale events such as a gala that we've talked about already, a concert, a neighborhood community walk, uh, walking around kids' schools track. Um, so those are just some ideas to, to share with you. Once you've identified what you want to do, then we would ask that you complete this DIY form. A couple other ideas are honoring a loved one. So um, create a tribute and honor or memory um, of someone you love. Pledge your day. So your birthday, a lot of times you'll see that on Facebook where people will pledge their birthday. Um, Zumba classes, yoga classes, um, create a challenge and make it fun and personal. Um, and always, also don't forget live streaming. So now uh, with all the live streaming opportunities we have, um, those are some other options for doing events too, is doing them live. Uh, walk your way, creating a walk event. Um, and then once you've determined what you're going to do, then you would complete the DIY form. And that's going to get into a lot more information. So that's when we have to start thinking about selecting the date and the time, um, selecting a venue. Um, and once you have those things together, then we will, and you've completed the DIY form, then we will create, we can create, we have the ability to create a website for your event. Um, and then you're going to want to really start thinking about, are there other people that can help you put this event on, <laughs> right? Because it's easier, we're better in numbers. Uh, so want to think about that. Developing a plan to promote the fundraiser, um, get, to get the word out, and um, really talk about highlighting uh, the reason why you're doing it. So sharing your story is really, really important here too. So establishing a plan, a budget, what you want your goal to be, and where you want the event to take place. These are all some of those logistical questions that are going to be asked in that DIY form. Um, setting a fundraising goal is really, really important. Um, and we want you to really think through what that goal should be. Um, but make sure that the goal is reasonable and achievable. Achievable goals always feel better than those goals that are just so far out there. You're not sure you'll ever get it. So, uh, want to make sure that you know that the that every dollar that we're raising here at I Define is critical to the work that we're doing. And so thinking about that as you're setting your goal, who are your likely supporters of this event? Um, and what would their average donation be? Um, are you going to have tickets at your event? Are you going to have an auction? Are you just going to have people have, have the ability to donate? Um, each of these areas can have a goal of their own that roll up to the overall goal. So you could set a goal of $5,000 and the auction's gonna raise a thousand, the ticket sales are gonna be 500, so on and so forth. If you're hosting like a lemonade stand, put a charge, it's $2 a cup or whatever you want that to be. Um, if you're gonna do a gala event, coordinating some of those larger corporate donations could be really, really important. And then last but not least, we always have to think about this, are expenses. Like what are, what are expenses that we may endure by hosting this event? So you want to make sure that you calculate that in when we're setting up that goal. But really, again, making sure that the goal is realistic and reachable, I think is really very important because it's a lot of fun to celebrate when you hit that goal. So we're going to talk about you know, kind of fundraising your way. And um, these are all the different areas. I just went through those, the yoga picture, um, the soccer game. So again, make making these fundraisers really relevant to your donors and to your community. So I briefly mentioned just a few minutes ago about donating um, to, to the fundraiser. So I think it's important that we donate first to the fundraiser. So when we donate first, then it shows our, our friends and our family that we're committed to the cause as well. So 
Um, I know our two speakers are on. I've already donated to both of their events. Um, so, you know, making that first donation, it's easier for me to go and ask somebody for a donation if I've already given a don my, own, my first donation. So make sure that you donate to yourself to kind of get your fundraiser started and show this, your supporters that we're really serious here at I Define about helping families with Cleavster syndrome and inspiring others to donate. Uh, so just want to make sure we do that first. That's step number two. Step number three, we want to make this personal. And um, I know Ann and I, when we talked earlier, um, later in the week, last week, she had just been to an event about sharing, um, talking about how you share your story. And sharing your story is really, really important. And everybody has their own story. We want to make it personal. Um, and we want to tell others why we're doing this DIY fundraiser uh, to connect them to the cause and really inspire them. So engage first, I ask you to engage your community by creating a list of everyone that you want to invite. Um, share your, the excitement with your family and friends and coworkers and encourage them to participate. Um, ask each of them to reach out to their networks. And this is when we get into the real peer-to-peer -peer approach of fundraising. And it's been found to be very, very successful. So I have uh, I have family, I have brothers, sisters, um, aunts, uncles. So, you know, just take the family and then from the family, take my neighbors and go to my next door neighbor on the left side, on the right side and across the street. So these are like if you sometimes people used to do like the old um, holiday card lists, like who are you going to send holiday cards to? I did that for years. Um, but it's really, really successful when you start connecting your peer group and other peer groups together. Think about medical doctors. Um, I send all of my children's uh, medical doctors and dentists a Christmas card. So they're on my list of people to ask. Um, and then think about social media contacts. And that gets really wide. Some of those social media contacts we may never have seen or heard of, but they're on our in our in our sphere. So utilizing some of those as well. So that's when the social sharing really helps. So reaching out through social media um, I am not opposed to phone calls. I love phone calls. So, you know, making a couple phone calls um, here is really important too. And um, creating kind of a sense of urgency uh, to enc encourage other people to get involved. Um, and we have put together a DIY toolkit for you. And in that DIY toolkit, I have already prepared some email templates that you can use, as well as some social media templates that you can use. So they're just, uh, they're, like I said, templates, but you can go in and plug and play. And um, they're specific uh, to our families um, here at iDefine. And so I encourage you to use those um, templated messages um, in your social and um, email messages. They're already written out for you. So it's just really putting in your information and being able to get those out. Um, so the next step after step three, we're going to keep in order here. Step four is to donate. So now that your fundraiser set up, um, we've asked our friends and family for donations and we're supporting and sharing all this message. We want to make sure that we have all of the logistics together. So, uh, the supplies that we need, um, we want to make sure all of those things have, have come together real nicely. And um, if you're having a larger event, as I, as I said earlier, it is important to try to pull together some volunteers, some helpers um, to kind of coach along the way as well. So um, check on your fundraising page and keep a good idea, a good, um, a good gander on, on where you are getting to your goal. Um, and we're going to talk about reporting in just a little bit, but um, Send handwritten notes, um, you know, put together some challenges and um, and stay in touch with those donors because it's really, really important. And asking is the biggest step. So when we ask, if we don't ask, we won't get. So making sure that we're making those asks are really, really important. And then celebrate. Celebrate is the best step of it all. We get to celebrate. We get to have our event. We get to celebrate our success um, and really, really enjoy uh, the celebration of all the funds that we've brought in for such an amazing cause and mission. So want to make sure that uh, we celebrate. And in celebration, we've collected all the funds, we've celebrated, and we want to thank all of our donors. And thanking them um, is really, really important. And 
I um, am very, I strongly believe in relationships are really, really key in fundraising. So um, want to make sure that we're thanking everybody that donated and helped us to, um, to celebrate our success. Um, and then of course, it's never too early to start planning the next year's event. And if you've had a successful <laughs> event, um, I think it's nice when people know the date of the next event and then they can mark it on their calendar um, and plan to be there. So, um, and then share some of the pictures too of your event. People love seeing pictures after the fact. So from the event, take a picture and then share that on social media. So just a couple like key steps when I think of DIY is determine the type of event, kind of in a recap, if you will, determine the type of event you want to have, set a goal, set a date and a time and a location, complete that Google form um, that I'm going to show you. And then always know that I'm available to set up a call to talk through some of the logistics. I'm here to support you and that's my role. So really want to make sure um, my calendar is available to you, that we can set up a 30 minute call uh, to do some pre-planning around your event. And um, I'm happy to provide those resources uh, to you all. So I'm just going to stop sharing real quick and I'm going to um, pull up another screen here uh, just to show you what this DIY fundraising web page request form looks like. So when we get into this form, we're going to ask you for your email. We're going to ask you for the name of your event so that you can kind of begin processing like all the things that we're going to need to be successful here. Um, the event name, the date and time and location, including the starting and ending times, the goal of the event. If you have an image, like a photo that you want to use with the event, that's going to be really important to have here. How many people do you anticipate at your event? Do you plan to have an auction at your event? And then you have the ability to put in an event description and additional event details. And I'm going to show you the two guests we have on their web pages um, in just a little bit. But um, these are just the initial questions that we will be asking. Are you selling tickets for the event? And if so, what's the ticket price going to be at? Going to be at? And then this is a cool feature where there you can put a donation button on your web page. And with that donation button, it's going to ask what are the levels you want to give? Um, and so, and there's five levels that you can choose from. Uh, so I've given an example there. And then do you want to display the goal amount on the website or not? And the two examples we're going to show today, like I said earlier, one will show the donate button and one will show the goal. And then uh, your contact information is going to be really, really important here. So you'll submit that form. And once that form is submitted, then I will get a notification that you've submitted the form. And at that time, I will reach out to you as well to connect. Right. So that being said, we're back to our presentation now. And I want to um, stop talking uh, because that's a lot of information uh, to share. And um, I want to introduce... Um, one of our families, Charlotte's mom and dad, Mary and Chris, um, and they are going to talk a little bit about their event coming up that they are hosting called Karaoke, Karaoke for Cleefstra. And uh, we are so excited that they're joining us this afternoon. And I'm going to hand it over to them to talk to you a little bit about how they got their event up and started and being so successful so quickly. Okay, well, thanks. Um, thanks, Maria. Thanks for having us today. We're excited. We're really excited about our event. Um, kind of, we just started, talk we were out to dinner one night without Charlotte, you know, so we had time to chat. And so um, we kind of just started talking, we should do something for, you know, Cleveland Syndrome Awareness Day. And then, um, and then it just kind of rolled and we kind of spitballed into things we talked about like, okay, well, you know, a lot of people do a walk, a lot of people do a, a you know, an auction or something. And then um, we have some friends who, like a friend who plays piano down at a bar, a bar downtown here in Indianapolis, and then people sing along with him. So then it kind of spitballed into like, oh, I wonder if he could do that with us. And then we're like, well, no, what if we just did karaoke? So that's kind of how we landed on doing karaoke. We just were shooting out ideas and we thought, okay, I think we have a whole group of people who would do karaoke for us. We have some friends who aren't afraid to embarrass themselves. Um, so what we're planning to do, is this will be our first time holding a fundraiser. So what we're planning to do is have um, 
people be able to like bid on a song. Either you say like, hey, you know, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to donate $20 or something to sing this song. Or let's say you don't want to sing, but you want to donate. You want someone else to sing. You nominate somebody else to sing. But let's say that person doesn't want to sing. So then they have to match your bid or higher in order to get out of singing or find someone to sing for you. So it's kind of a little bit back and forth. So the DJ who's coming is actually going to serve as an auctioneer, right? Yeah. And he specializes in exactly that kind of thing. So it was uh, just uh, really lucky that we were able to find somebody that, that does exactly that. Yeah. So we found him just like you found him through just a Google search. So we thought we'd made up this whole karaoke charity thing and we hadn't. So, um, so then we found that it is a real thing. People do it. And so then that's how we found that guy. I yeah. thought, man, we're so clever. But no, people have done it before. So, um, so that's kind of what we did. And then we just we came up with that idea. And then we're like, okay, well, where could we have it? Um, so I've lived in Indianapolis pretty much my whole life. Um, and so, you know, we have a large connection here in Indianapolis, a large community that we kind of interact with. And, and one of my very good friends, her family owns a hardware store here in town. So we're having it at the hardware store. And it's a different kind of hardware store. It's not your like Lowe's type hardware store. It's definitely your locally owned hardware store. And it has, you can kind of hear Charlotte now, um, <laughs> you has an event center in it. So I just reached out to her and I said, Hey, we want to do this you know, how much does it cost? And she said, we'll give it to you for free. So, um, so which is nice that so we have, we got the event space for free, which helps with the cost. So um, with that though, the food and drinks are not free and neither is the DJ. Yeah. So we did decide to do a ticket price with the event and just based on how much the DJ costs and the food and drinks estimated, that's how we kind of came up with our ticket cost. Um, and we've had great success so far. We're at like 84 tickets sold, I think, and our event's not until September 8th. And, um, and we're still rising. We're hoping to get at least a hundred, if not more than that. The space holds about 200 people. So we're really hopeful in that. Um, I think what else did you have to add to what I leave out? Uh, Braden, uh, our, oh, nephew, our nephew, yeah. uh, did a video for us, uh, that we're, we're able to put on the, uh, event site, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of telling our story in a, a quick, you know, four to five minute long video. Mm -hmm. um, really did a great job of making us sound really smart by taking out all of the ahs and ums and, mm -hmm. and everything. And I, I think the video turned out great, but it's yeah. uh, it's been, I feel, one of the more powerful parts of the- Yeah, a lot uh, of people have commented yeah. on the video that's on our um, on our page. And he's going to actually come to the event and he's going to take video and pictures and create another video for after the event for us to share out for even the next time that we were to do a fundraiser because we thought that that would be pretty beneficial to kind of see like, hey, here's what happened last year and this is what we're doing this year. Um, so hopefully it'll just kind of build from there. But I think we are friends, our large community of friends and family, we know that we have at least a small, at least 50 people will come, but um, but we're happy to have at least 84 now and and, and still growing. So I think so. Anything I left out, Meredith? No, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, you hit on how many people the site hosted were able to hold. I think you said it was 200. So that kind of gave you that, what your goal could be as number of guests. Yeah. Um, and I love that there's a couple things that you mentioned that I really loved. One is the video. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like... Uh, Jeff's popped in the chat that the uh, video, he's seen the video. So that's great. Um, and then the other thing too is, uh, I think you did a, a, a great job of putting all the logistics together and thinking about interactive things during the whole battle between and that kind of thing. That's going to be super fun. Yeah. And I do think with an event like this, you can also engage maybe, and I know we talked about it in our initial call and just for other people, I know you're not planning to do this, but the live stream event, you know, if somebody like myself couldn't be at your event, this mm -hmm. would be an opportunity to buy an online ticket, you know, and, and attend that way. So there are options for that too, with an event like this. I think it's fabulous. Yeah. And people will be able to shop too while they're there. So it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, so it should work out really great. We're looking forward to it and we'll kind of keep, keep I define updated for how it goes after the fact. Great. Will you talk about how you came up with your um, goal? Oh yeah. So our goal is $9,343. So that being the 9Q3 4.3. Um, so we thought that was kind of a good goal. You know, it's a lofty goal, I think, especially for us being first time 
fundraisers. Yeah, you know, but, it, but it also prompts people to ask the question like, hey, how'd you come up with that goal? Yeah. And it's like, oh, let me explain mm -hmm. a little bit about Kleechter syndrome and mm -hmm. uh, you know, its causes. So. Right. And at the event that night, do you plan to speak and share your story at the event that night? Yes, we'll share a little bit and thank everybody for coming. And then we're going to open with our own song. Okay. So we'll, we'll start off with a song that we'll sing. And um, Chris is a much better singer than I am. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Okay. And what song have you picked out? I'm curious. Not, we haven't picked we it out. We got to start practicing. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I threw out Islands in the Stream, but then I was like, everybody does that. So, you know, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's great. My usual yes. is Dolly Parton nine to five. My solo one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's great. That is wonderful. And, um, I thank you both for uh, reaching out to Jeff and we had, we were able to, the four of us to talk ahead of time and I was able to answer some questions for them. Um, so that was, that was great. And really appreciate uh, you taking the time to meet with us. And I think your event's going to be fantastic. I just wish I was a little closer to Indianapolis and I would be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, Good. I'm, I don't think I have any other questions for you, I think. And will Charlotte be there that night? She'll be there for part of it. My parents actually live in the neighborhood that's right behind the hardware store. Okay. So we've arranged one of my friend's daughters is going to babysit her over at my parents' house that night. So she'll go to bed there. Oh, she'll be there from about six to seven. So she's only two and a half. So she still goes to bed pretty early. So, okay. uh, so she'll go over there. Okay, good. And then um, I had one other question I was thinking about if, if Charlotte was going to be there. And um, there was one other question that just, uh, just escaped me. I'm sorry. I was thinking of something else to ask you about it. And I, oh, I know what it is. Are they interested? Is the hardware store, would they think about doing like a 10% of proceeds back to the event? So, so I'm sure they probably will. I'm actually meeting with my friend on Tuesday. So we'll talk about that, but okay. they are giving us like, we're getting the food and, and drinks at a discount as well. So the okay. hardware store is already okay. doing that for us. Cause they have to, we have to do all the food and drinks through them. Um, so they're already giving us the space for free and then a discount on yes. drinks and everything, which yeah. is really nice because that's a large cost. So. Yes, that is a huge cost. And that's great mm -hmm. that they're doing that. I, when you said shop, it just made me think of like, you know, and that's, that's a fundraiser in and of itself is when you do a proceeds back type thing. Um, yeah. When you said the word shop, it made me think of a percentage back, but I think they're giving you a lot. So I would yes, just go are. with that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, about your event. We are super excited about it. And I'm going to show your website here in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, but we have another guest on the line. Um, so I'm going to go back to sharing the screen and uh, bring up the PowerPoint here. And uh, we are going to, I'm going to now introduce our next speaker, um, Anne Olendike from Louisiana. And Anne, I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about your event, Tailgates and Touchdowns. Uh, you're muted. Okay, can you hear me? There we go. Okay. Yes, perfect. Thank you. I certainly couldn't do this event without Meredith's help. So thank you for helping me so much. And I encourage all of you out there to ask Meredith for help. Ask all your friends for help because fundraising is daunting. But I like to just think about doing something small with excellence and just build on it every year. So I do have to say, um, getting the governor's proclamation for Louisiana this year motivated me to have a fundraiser. Um, I tried to get it last year. It came in in February of this year for last year. <laughs> so the states are so slow. You have to find someone in the governor's office to nag and call. So if you don't have your governor's proclamation, I would encourage you to start calling somebody. Um, so um, what I'm doing this year is really, I'm doing a lot about, um, my goal is to create awareness and education amongst myself for Cleefstra. What is Cleefstra? My daughter's only been diagnosed two years. And amongst my family and friends, like I've explained to people why we're having this Cleefstra syndrome day on 917. And when I tell them, they're like, aha, that's amazing, right? And um, so that is a goal for to do that amongst family and friends. Also, um, amongst Juliana's doctors, um, 
I am sharing all of this with all of her team of doctors. I'm trying to get them to do things, um, whether we create an infographic and they post it in their um, offices and they wear purple, you know, on that Friday to kick off the weekend. Um, I used to work in the public schools as a speech pathologist. I'm trying to get my special ed department to do a jeans for gene day and give a dollar and get to dress down and wear purple again and educate them about what is Pleister syndrome. Um, because at this point, we're the only ones that we know of in Louisiana, but we know that there's got to be more. Um, and then um, the other thing is, um, so I decided that I would try to do something um, in my community um, for fundraising um, besides those ideas. And I decided to incorporate it into my, I have a nonprofit that I run. It's a small nonprofit. It's called Basket of Hope. It's a chapter of a national. So I'm doing a two for one fundraiser, basically. Um, my daughter's nonverbal, but she can say touchdown. So we're going to do a tailgate for hope and touchdowns for Kleefster syndrome, kind of all in one event. And um, so I have this little community I live in is like 900 people, but it's surrounded by metropolis. It's a little town. And I spoke with my mayor and I asked him if we could use the town hall um, in our community and it's on the riverfront. And um, thankfully, because my nonprofit is like local, I was able to rent the space. It's not costing anything on Cleefstra, you know, for me fundraising for Cleefstra. And um, so what, I, what we're doing is um, we're inviting people to host a tailgate team because we are from the South and we are, you know, we're faith, family, and football. So, um, and Juliana can say touchdown. So uh, we are asking people to host a tailgate team to come. They have to pay to be in it, $150. And I've kind of looked at other events and they can go anywhere from these cook-offs from one to $500 entry fee. So I figured that was a good price, 150. And so they come in, they have to set their tent up and they have to provide a food item. They can cook it on site, they can bring it prepared. Um, and we are going to um, have the ticket holders go tent to tent to sample the food that the people are presenting. And, you know, it could be nachos, we don't care. It's not a cook-off of what we call jambalaya or red beans and rice or barbecue. It's not a cook-off, it's a tailgate. So some people are boiling shrimp. Some people are doing deep fried pork bites. Some people are doing um, the little mini ch um, chili slider hot dogs. I mean, anything, variety. I have friends coming in with daiquiris. We drink those in the South. Um, so when I came up with the idea, I thought, how can I raise money for Cleaster syndrome along with this event for Basket of Hope? And we wanted to um, create a face, um, a donation page, which Meredith helped me with. Well, she did it. And my goal is to get people to donate $29 for Juliana's age of 29. I know I'll get more than that. But I thought, well, let's just start there. Keep it simple. And we're doing a silent auction at the event, at the tailgate. Um, I have about 15 items so far. Hope to raise $1,000 for that. I'm still getting, and I'm just asking friends and family, anybody, I drive around with a notebook in my car or I put it in my phone. If I think of somebody, I will ask if you are alive and you breathe, I will ask you for something for my auction. And it's just something that you kind of start working at months in advance, you know? So I have a bunch of things in my, um, in my little library. And, um, and so that's our fundraiser. Um, we have the event space. Um, I have 10, 11 tailgate teams. My goal is 29 for Juliana's age, but if I get 20, I'll be happy. Um, and then let's see what else I wanted to share. Um, we're doing it on Saturday, September 16th, because we are streaming the LSU, Louisiana State Football Go Tigers. We're streaming the game on a big screen outside amongst the tailgate tents. And then also inside at the community center so people can go in and out. And that's where the auction items will be. And we want to put the drinks in there so they have to go in and out and get them to see the auction items. Um, so we'll have a mic and we can talk ahead of time. We can show some video. Um, and so we'll be streaming the LSU game and encouraging everybody to wear purple. So pulls in Cleefster syndrome. Juliana will be there in her custom dress for the event. <laughs> um, and let's see what else. Um, trying to think is there anything else that I could think of to share about that have I gone over um I, I'm listening to you and I've I had some questions and I think you've answered them I remember the 29 that's awesome setting the goal around mm -hmm. that um putting mm -hmm. both of you have set goals with meaning and I think that's a real good message for other people to get a hold of um so I appreciate you sharing that
and the logistical piece, both of you have done a fabulous job with getting a, the locations donated and those types of things. I think that's excellent. Um, and I think you've given a good example, Anne, of how you can do a dual charity. Like, you know, you could do two mm -hmm. if in, in one type things um, as well to kind of combine fundraising. Sometimes people can't imagine how that can work, but you've shown it really well how it can work. Um, and Julianne's going to be there. That's great. That was a question I was going to ask you. And then will you have the opportunity? So I'm imagining everybody kind of set up in their tailgate. Will you have the opportunity to share your story Anne, and let them know, you know, how long um, it's taken for you to get diagnosed and how Julianne's doing and all that? Well, I, one of my board members suggested, since there's so much information about this event that we needed to do a video. And I think oh. doing, I'm going to steal um, Chris and Mary's idea. I think definitely doing a, you know, telling my story um, would be helpful. So we'll, they, I have friends who can make that video for me. Um, we'll definitely play that before the game, maybe during halftime or afterwards, but, you know, probably beforehand. And um, yeah, and then um, locally, since last year, I started to try to do something. This is how slow life is in reality when, with fundraising planning, is I spoke to Juliana psychiatrist last year about Cleavster Syndrome Awareness Day. And she works with a very large um, hospital called Ochsner Hospital System. It's huge in the state of Louisiana. And um, she reached out to marketing to try to get them to do a story because she is like my she is our gatekeeper. She talks with Dr. Sid. She's amazing. And it took until this year for the marketing department of the hospital to contact me. So just this spring, they created a video story of Juliana and talking and interviewing me. And so we'll have that to share. And it was presented at uh, one of her conferences. And there were over 100 physicians there who watched it and came up to her and said, we've never heard of this. We want to research this. We want to know about this. And so little things like that, you know, have come about in our local, our, I've reached out to the hospitals in our community. And one of the hospitals is a new children's hospital in Baton Rouge. And they're lighting the hospital in purple for the weekend. And they're all wearing purple and allowing me to share some kind of infographic or something to um, staff so they can post it around the hospital so they can learn what Cleavster syndrome is. That's wonderful. And, and the video is key. I think that's a really good element. If you can't speak live at the event and sometimes speaking live can have um, people can maybe speak too long or they get upset telling their story. So when you have that video and as um, Mary and Chris said, they kind of critiqued it and took out all the eyes and ums. That's great when you can have that picture polished video. And then it's something that you can continue to share as well um, afterwards. So excellent job um, on that. And I'm glad we did some idea sharing there. That's great. So we're going to take a quick look um, at both his web pages now. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and thank you so much for sharing. And Mary and Chris, thank you so much. That was excellent. Really appreciate uh, you sharing with all of your event details with us all uh, to kind of get us our minds going and, and get excited about the uh, fundraising. So this is the Karaoke for Kleefstra webpage. This, as I mentioned, is through uh, Network for Good. You'll see we have the I Define logo on the webpage that's created the date and time and place of uh, the image. Uh, Mary and Chris both asked to put the goal in. So we have on the right-hand side, you'll see the goal $9,343. And there they have the toggle bar um, of how close they're getting to their goal. And they've got 26 people that have donated. One of the things that Chris and Mary have been asking me for is a report of the people that have donated because they wanna be able to thank them immediately. So. They've quickly asked me for that report and I'm able to provide that to them with the name, the email address and the amount of the donation so that they can respond to those donors individually and thank them. When they do donate, they automatically get a thank you letter with our tax ID number on it. So that automatically happens when every donation comes in, just so you're aware. Um, but if you want to do that second level of that relationship building, like we talked about earlier, um, we can provide that report to you of everybody that's donated. Um, a couple other things with this, um, and you are seeing my web page, you are seeing the web page, right? Just for yeah. the nod of a head. Okay, perfect. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so you'll see here. Um, all right, I'm just trying to get my mouse on my screen here. I was going to scroll down. There we go. Okay, so you'll see here there's a, a message um, 
about the event. You can also automatically Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, email this link to um, again, build that social sharing. So we've added their story here and then um, they can add to the calendar and get directions to the event. Everything is right here on this website. Uh, the other website I'm gonna show you real quick is um, the tailgate, tailgates and touchdowns. So with Anne's event, we did not do a goal because her event, remember, has two organizations that she's, so we did not put a goal and we just put on the right side, the donate button. So you'll see the donate button here. And um, with that donate button, we came up with the 10, the 29 for Julianne, 50, 75 and 100, or they can click whatever amount they want. And they can also choose to honor an honor or memorial for somebody as well, if they would like to do that. And I can export that report to show where, who the donation was made in memory of or in honor of to uh, this event again we have the image um, we've got some details about the event here uh, tickets for both of these events were not done through network for good we do have the ability to do ticket sales but for these two examples today the ticket piece was not included in the website so the websites are really just being used for donations um, and I want to just uh, pop back over to uh, the donate button here on this one. And you'll see we did 13. To get to that goal, we wanted to have something end in the three. So we did 13, 33, 43, 63, and 93. So uh, there is some thought in putting all those pieces together when we're building these sites out. So please feel free um, to complete the form here and we can help you get your event um, set up for you. And I'm happy to walk through any of that with you along the way. That's what I'm here for. Um, but just wanted to talk to you a little bit about Network for Good and some of those resources. Uh, we have been very pleased with the software system so far. Um, it is simple. Um, and uh, so we have been very happy with it and happy to get your event set up for you. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to, um, we're going to stop sharing. Uh, we're going to just move to a Q&A. And I don't know if anybody on the line has any questions. It does not look like we have anything in the, in the Q&A, but want to open it up here for anybody on the line that may have questions uh, or any of our panelists that may have questions as well um, that may help other people putting their events together. And if you want to come off mute, you can, and you can just talk. Among, we can ask, you know, talk amongst ourselves for a few minutes. And if there's any questions anybody has. I think we've all learned a lot from each other today. That's been good. I don't have any questions, but y'all did phenomenal. I mean, just hear, hearing the the stories and, and just understanding the efforts. I mean, it's, it's incredible uh, what you guys are doing and, and, what you're taking on because i agree you know the the fundraising is difficult to take the first step i think it's one of those things that once you once you leap in though um there are a bunch of tools and resources and you're it's amazing to see community rally around it and i know when i did our first fundraiser a couple of years ago i had no idea what i was doing uh you have like a vision of what you want to do uh but then when you start seeing it all come together and you really see people come out to support you um, is pretty fantastic. And then at the end of the day, we're doing things to help, you know, fund the Boston Children's Hospital effort for the Cleaster Clinic. We're funding research. We're, we're just doing some amazing things from an organizational perspective. And this is the fuel that gets us there. So uh, again, I think y'all are all incredible. I would just um, say, and go dogs, um, and not, not go tigers. But <laughs> other than that, this has been fantastic. You do have a beautiful college campus. <laughs> it's very nice. I, um, if Juliana, another fundraiser that I would probably consider doing would be um, cupcakes or cakes for Cleefstra because my daughter like lives for cake. She will find the cake knife. She will bring you the plates. If there is a cake, she is the supervisor. And, um, you know, so I may do like next year, I don't know, I think this will be an annual event, though, for us. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can just build on it. And that's my takeaway for everybody would be just start simple and 
ask for help and build, get people to help you. You know, if you can get five good friends to help you and, you know, no one can really critique it because like you've never done it before. So, and also, um, you know, it's dollars that we never had before. I think um, for me, I need to have like, you went through Meredith, all the reasons that we are fundraising um, together, we make a difference slide and you went through and I was writing those like that needs to be spoken to people like, why are you fundraising? Well, let me tell you why I'm fundraising and listing those. I want to actually have those up like on posters at my event um, because it's not people think, oh, it's just going to send administrative cost or something like that. No, we're we're changing the world here and helping families. Um, so I definitely want to get that in some kind of um you know, thing that I can get printed with the I Define logo and a QR code or something. Yes, so that, and during the works. Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. That, that kind of reminded me of something we left out is we did reach out to one of our friends who works for a local nonprofit. She does lots of fundraisers and we kind of started with chatting with her first too, um, just because we've never done a fundraiser. I've done, I've done events for my work, but they're never fundraisers, you know, so I, mm -hmm. I know how to put together an event, but I've never held a fundraiser before. So, um, so it was nice to talk to her and she gave us, she gave us other things and like connections and stuff too, um, in the city. Cause we're having like, you know, to get like kegs donated and stuff like that, um, through some other places that local breweries that are willing to do that kind of thing for us. But yeah, she was on top of, you know, make sure you, you know, think about a goal, make sure you think about, you know, this and that. And so it was, it was nice to have a resource like that, but, yeah. but then, uh, I define uh, has yes, been great. Obviously, and then we reached out to you all, and we're like, "Well, we got to contact them, see what they, what platform you all have." You know, like, what can we do? Because to have the funds directly go to you is yeah. really easy, right? Rather than having to channel it a different way. Yeah. Yes, that's great. And so, one thing that we are working on, just so you know, Jeff and I and team are working on kind of a one pager with where the money goes. What you know, what are the accomplishments okay. we're doing? So we are working on that. Uh, it's in progress. So as soon as we get it in our hands, we will get it into your hands. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, because we do have just a few minutes left, um, is to not to think about um, we talk about fundraisers, restaurants, restaurants. It's very easy for them to do a 10 percent of proceeds. And Anne, you and I were talking about this the other day. Um, and she's going to reach out to one of her restaurants locally, but that 10% of proceeds, they can add that on to the cost of the item and it's no expense to the restaurant. Um, and those can be really, really beneficial uh, fundraisers for organizations like I Define. So uh, if there's a local restaurant group in your community, uh, some of the larger chains are more difficult to get on. So if you have local restaurants that you can connect with, uh, this is a great like, highlight a Thursday once a month, um, an entire month, they can do 10%. I um, mean, I know that we've had, um, we've had the noodle bar up in, um, up in the Boston area and Northeast do this last year. Uh, so hopefully the, you know, that's some other, some groundwork that we can put and implement in other restaurant groups across the country. So just wanted to put that plug in as we mentioned lemonade stands and golf tournaments, but that's another, um, that's another fundraising option as well. So Yep. Excellent. Well, I know it's uh it's Sunday and uh Sunday fun day. So I want to give you some time back in your day, but uh really appreciate you all being with us this afternoon. It's been a great conversation. I hope that you've um taken away some fun fundraising tips uh to be successful. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or needs, um, I define myself, Jeff, we're here to help any way that we can, and we just really appreciate all that you're doing to help us further our mission and our goals here at the organization. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 -bye.